Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Kathy Johnson, and I would like to <laughs> introduce Yoki Albuthe, running for City Alder from District 8. As we begin, please tell your viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for Alder. Hi everyone, my name is Iomi Obuse um, and I'm running in District 8. You know, I this is my home. I've come, I came to Madison in 2016 um, as an immigrant. Uh, you know, coming into America, coming into Madison was a pretty scary time. And I really wanted to understand the system to keep myself and my family safe. So I began asking a lot of questions and I got really involved in my high school. And my teachers then told me about a program in which I could intern at the city council. And so while I was in high school, I interned um, and was on the land and regulations committee as I transitioned into UW-Madison through scholarships I got from West High School and became a CO scholar at UW-Madison, I then began interning at the state capitol and I began to look at legislation and policy a lot differently because then I was able to, one, be able to see the process of writing legislation, connect with constituents and network and such a beautiful building that I saw when I first entered um, this amazing city. Last summer, I was um, on a congressional campaign, as well as helping to lead peaceful protests here in Madison and began organizing and was the co-founder of Impact Demand and currently the executive director. And we've built national coalitions with um, organizations in DC, as well as Colorado. We've worked with local nonprofits here, such as Freedom Inc. and Urban Triage, as well as UW organizations. And, you know, I've been able to connect to my constituents every single day and I'm running in District 8 because I've lived here for a number, number of years and I believe the role of an alder is to build relationships and make sure that our policies are rooted in the community, sustainable, equitable, and inclusive. Okay, first question. What issue or issues have you identified as being of primary concern to the residents of your district and how will you approach tackling them? Yeah, so one of the biggest thing that I've seen right now, I guess everyone has seen, especially is COVID and that's really affecting my constituents um, and kind of exacerbating the problems that were already here in regards to affordable housing. And so to address affordable housing, I'm really going to be working with developers. I already have established a relationship with them um, this last summer. And so continuing to work with developers and our neighborhood associations um, to make sure that our properties are more affordable, that the policies that we're trying to implement are looked through with an equitable lens, as well as um, looking at creative housing. So uh, I was also had an amazing opportunity um, to help build tiny homes. So continuing to work at creative housing like that, as well as nonprofits like YWCA Madison, Freedom Inc., and micro lending programs in which people of color can start not only um, buying property, but passing on wealth. And I think that's a huge thing that's affecting our community is talking about economic justice. There will be an advisory referendum on the ballot in April about a number of modifications to the Common Council, including changing the number of members, making it full time and changing the term of office. Which of the ideas being advanced do you embrace and why or why not? Yeah, so I've been talking to so many of different community members about this, um, current alders. I think, you know, I'm still in those conversations, but I'm leaning towards expanding the district um, because one, you're able to get paid um, a fair wage, and that's extremely important um, to me and to to everyone in this community to be paid fairly. I think the amount of work and effort that needs to be put into the position of an alder requires um, time and also requires more staff available so that you're able to connect to your constituents a little bit more. Also, this provides um, more access to people of color that are able to 
run for office and still have and be able to pay for their apartments, for example, rather than then get another job. So as a student, it's extremely important because I'm a current student. I also have a job and like doing um, being an alder is something that you have to really think about. It shouldn't be a sacrifice. It should be something that you're passionate about and you really want to continue to amplify their voices. So um, I'm, I'm a supporter of that. <laughs> Homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing for Madison that seem to have been exasperated in the time of COVID-19. What ideas would you advance or support to help solve these problems? So as an organizer, I heard problems um, the community was facing day after day. I lived on State Street. I lived within my district. And the issue of homelessness, especially for students, is such a real concern, especially those who aren't documented as homeless because they're simply couch surfing. I think different ways the city could get involved is by implementing bus rapid transit, um, talking about 24 access of bus of to buses, as well as implementing electric buses that have Wi-Fi, because um, any policy that we do, we want to make sure it is sustainable and has longevity. So making sure that it is environmentally friendly is also a priority, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, housing first initiatives are extremely important because they provide a sense of stability, um, security, and safety. And I, you're able to finally build community and move forward um, through those connections. So those are a couple ways of which we can address the concerns of homelessness. But I think it takes initiative, not just in one area, not just in the South and East side, but in every district to make sure that we are really honing and focusing our skills on affordable housing. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there's a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice, both from, from the perspective of racial equity in law enforcement and the concern of many citizens that in fact crime, especially car thefts and home burglaries is increasing and that police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these concerns? Yeah, so as an organizer, um, I've heard so many concerns addressing the police and, you know, I've looked at that OIR report, looked at the ad hoc committee suggestions, and it's clear that, you know, we've, we've had these concerns, we've made this, these recommendations five years ago. Transparency is a huge issue here in Madison. Um, having access to just be able to communicate, um, I think is important and it built, we need to build more trust. And I think as an organizer, as an activist, that's what I want to see happen a little bit more here in Madison is those community relationships. So I am for town halls. Um, I'm for de mandatory de-escalation trainings. I think right now here in Madison, we were seeing, especially during the protests, a lot more militarization. For example, the police wanting a projectile launcher. But I think it's important that we invest in the community and the needs and the concerns that we're having, for example, mental health, especially during a pandemic. Implementing the CAHOOTS program is really important. It also saves the city money. Um, we are currently in a budget deficit. And so when we have those resources, we're able to fund programs such as urban gardening um, and building a teen center downtown because, you know, our kids out in the streets, they need a place where they can come together and kind of um, share ideas and create that sense of community to go through, you know, so much that we're seeing right now regarding the pandemic. So those are a couple, a couple ways of addressing the police here in Madison. Man. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed during the past year. What, if anything, would you propose to support business revitalization? Yeah, so, you know, we have to tackle this issue um, on multiple fronts, not just at a city level, but statewide. And I think, you know, coalition building is something that I've been a huge supporter of. Recently, we did a, an event um, with Francesca Hong, some school board members, and some other candidates running um, for Alder. And that's something that we're implementing in our campaign because when elected, we want to continue the, building those relationships. 
In regards to businesses, um, implementing the CDFI, Community Developed Finance Institution, as well as the WHEDA, Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development um, Authority, air, areas in which you know we're able to look at state funds to help local businesses. My family has a small business on the east side, so I understand the importance of making sure that we are helping our community um, because I think that's that what makes Madison such a great place to be, the art, the culture, um, and those you know experience with our community um, is inviting and we need to encourage that growth. What measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? Yeah, so um, my environmental platform is something I'm really proud um, to introduce and um, to talk a little bit more about. You know, I think it's more than just environmental projects, but environmental justice, talking about ways in which we can understand the land around us and use it to better ourselves and better our community. So for example, um, talking about sustainability, we wanna implement um, having lights on Lakeshore Path, especially in the student district. I know many people who have graduated UW-Madison have also asked for the same thing, but using footfall paths, for example, is a way in which we can um, create energy ourselves. We can implement that as well on State Street and other areas in Madison. Uh, I also want to make sure that we have solar panels and green roofs. We've seen flooding, especially in 2018. And so making sure that, you know, we're not just mitigating the effects of climate change, but addressing it through policy. Um, so new developers having um, more sustainability, green policies, as well as having electric buses. I think it's super important that we have more public transportation, but making sure it's um, green as well as is good for the community. Um, so those are a couple creative ways, but I really want to look to innovative and creative ideas. So looking at the lakes, we have a huge algae problem, taking in those algae blooms and using it for biofuel to, to power electricity within buildings is something that I'm currently working towards. And I think a great example um, of that will be shown in the teen center we plan to build. On what committees would you like to serve and why? So I, I look forward to serving on the Landlord and Tenant Issues Committee. I think, you know, as an immigrant, we are seeing so many um, problems in regards to tenants being afraid to reach out for help, especially um, to their landlords, because they're afraid of being uh, evicted, deported, problems with their visa. And so uh, this is something that I've seen a lot of a lot of people, a lot of my friends um, go through. This is currently, I'm in my first apartment. And so um, it's something that, you know, a lot of students are kind of addressing as we begin to branch out and get our first apartment. So um, being a resource in that regard, um, I've been talking to lawyers um, and trying to make sure that people have access. And I'll be, you know, encouraging that on my platform as well as when elected. And using social media as a bridge to engage the community is something that I will be also implementing, um, but I'm currently doing that right now with live streams and, and town halls. Uh, so be sure to follow on those <laughs> events. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Uh, I would just like to say thank you for your time. I believe that those most affected by power, I need to speak up and run for office because we see firsthand how the legislation affects us. Um, I will be one of the first black immigrants to hold this seat and that's something I don't take lightly. And I wanna empower more young people to run and to use your voice. I always say, speak up even if your voice shakes and you know, we're seeing that in real time. We're seeing this movement for Black Lives transform into activists now running for office and using our voice on a different platform. So be engaged in your democracy. Go to iomiforalder.vote if you want to get involved and um, have a say and be a part of this democracy. I want to thank Iomi for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.